Hi friends and family and welcome to my story time. Needless to say, I just got back from an adventure. It was a well-planned getaway to Cancun that was intended to be a content collecting trip. I was taking my daughter, I did take my daughter, and uh, she was gonna be my photographer and our plans were to visit some resorts and to experience some excursions and come back to have plenty of content for my blog, my social media. That was my plan. Well planned, by the way, because I'm a good travel agent. And I, uh, let's see, on Monday, October the 5th, I drove down after dinner with my husband to just north of Atlanta where our daughter lives. And my plan was just to crash at her apartment and take a lift the next morning to the airport. As we are laying in bed, ready to go to sleep and get a little sleep before our adventure, we, um, I'm, I had her go ahead and check the weather and you know, it said rain and that's literally all it said. Mom, it's gonna be raining some. Don't worry, it always rains in the Caribbean. That was my response. So we went to sleep, woke up the next morning, went to the Atlanta airport. We were flying uh, Spirit Airlines and that required us to do a layover in Fort Lauderdale. So on our layover, as we were getting on our second plane to get us to Cancun, I was going to cut my phone off of airplane mode and I had a little news notification pop up that said something about a hurricane and I was like okay so curiosity gets the best of me I click it and lo and behold there's a hurricane headed straight for the Yucatan, Yucatan Peninsula which is where we're going also so I look over at my daughter and I'm like so it seems we may be flying into a hurricane and I'm really surprised that the airline didn't cancel our flight. No, like, do they know? We, we didn't know prior to this point. And come to find out later, it was a very quickly developing storm. And that's why we weren't getting hurricane warnings um, several hours earlier when we had initially checked our weather. So here we are on a plane, headed off. Sure, okay, let's see. Let's see what this holds. Um, so on the flight there, my daughter and I are just chit-chatting and joking about how we're going to hunker down in the bathtub of our hotel room and we're going to, you know, pretend to be Jim Cacciatore with the Weather Channel and, you know, just ha ha and about it. And so we get to Cancun, get through the airport pretty quickly. Not my first time in Cancun. I know how to get there uh, and not look anybody in the eye to get out sooner than later catch our transfers that I had already pre-planned and went to our hotel. So we arrive at our resort. It is the Park Royal Beach Cancun. And we get inside the lobby and there are people everywhere. Most of them have at least one little piece of luggage, a pillow, a blanket. And we're guessing like, what is going on? And she's like, well, maybe it's people who are trying to get to the airport to leave before the hurricane gets here. I was like, maybe, maybe it's like a group of people that are real, all traveling together and you know, they're leaving or they're checking in or something and we didn't know. So through all of the crowd, we find our way eventually to the check-in counter where we greet this really nice staff member. And I'm like, hi, we're here to check in. And he's like, what? I said, yeah, we have a reservation. And he said, no, we don't have any rooms. And I'm like, okay, uh, but we have a reservation. He said, no, you have to leave. And so this goes back and forth and I'm totally confused thinking they've lost my reservation. What we ended up finding out is what he was trying to tell me is that they could not assign a room to me because they were evacuating everyone from the hotel. He checked us in, gave us our wristbands for our all-inclusive package, and sent us to go sit in the lobby with all of the other guests of the resort. 
we are outside after I've called my hubby, caught him up on our situation, and he's like, all right, just keep me informed. And we noticed two women who look American. Now this is important because this particular resort draws mostly Spanish speaking um, tourists. So we're a minority, which is okay. I go to another country. I don't expect them to speak my language, but I am in a situation where I'm like, I feel like I need a little more information. So I'm not one to ever know a stranger and I just walk up to them and I'm like, hey, do you happen to speak English? And they're like, yes. Awesome. So we get to chit chatting. They're catching us up on what's going on. Uh, basically, we're waiting for buses that are going to take us to a shelter. And they're like, hey, you can stay with us. One of them had a leg brace and she's like, we're using it so that we can get on the first bus out of here. I'm like, awesome. So we get to chatting with a staff member who speaks English and she tells us that actually my daughter and I have to wait because we don't have a room number and they're loading by room numbers based on what floor of the resort you're staying in. We don't have a room number. They didn't give us a room because we just got there. So we go back inside while everyone else is slowly lining up as their floor number is called. And finally, we're down to the last few and we're waiting for a bus. We get in line, we give our name, and we're checked in, waiting, waiting for that last bus. And a lady from the resort um, who comes to find out she's the head of HR, very kind, very well-spoken, comes to us and just says, hey, how are you doing? It's like, fine, just waiting on the bus. You know, my honestly, I'm just hungry because uh, it's been a while since we've eaten. And so she goes, oh, don't worry. They'll feed you when you get to the shelter. Um, but let me see if I can find something. So she goes back to the kitchens and finds a banana and an apple that have been picked from the trees um, that are there at the resort that day. So talk about fresh fruit. And eventually she even gets us a couple of sandwiches and some yogurts. Um, so she's like... I don't know where she's pulling it out of, but she's smuggling us food, which was just so thoughtful, and I really appreciate that. Eventually, the last bus gets there, and we and the remaining few other guests that are there, not even a bus full, we jump on the bus, and they start taking us down the road. They drive us out of the hotel zone of Cancun and into these little back streets where this big, old long bus is just winding amongst all these cars, talent, is what these bus drivers have, that they can maneuver like that. It was really quite impressive. Eventually, after 35-ish minutes, we land at a Catholic church. Now, when I thought shelter, I'm thinking like just a big block building somewhere where all of us are gonna be in one big room, and um, no, it's a Catholic church. As they drop us off and we're unloading, they're directing us into this open-air sanctuary. And lo and behold, we see our other American friends. They wave us down and show us where they've saved us two seats. So you know, when people say don't talk to strangers, they really mean it. But in this case, it came in handy. We really buddied up with these two ladies and we went through the whole experience together. So eventually they start making announcements in Spanish and very broken English. Um, but with the help of some individuals around us who were bilingual, um, we got to understanding that they, at first they were giving rooms to those with medical conditions like high blood pressure, diabetes, totally understandable. Um, unfortunately, one of our new friends who had the leg brace, that did not count, <laughs> but that's okay. We were still in good hands. Eventually, they did come to us and ask if we were ready to get a room. We asked if we could stay together. And they told us they had another American group and is it okay if we roomed with them? Certainly fine, whatever, the more the merrier. So they lead us outside the sanctuary, around the building to a two-story block building and up some stairs on the exterior, down a little narrow balcony and to a room where um, there's this other American family. I'm not good with measurements, but I think the room was probably like 16 by 16, block all over, tile floor, very basic. There were about maybe 
12 or so, maybe. Um, old style wooden desks, you know, the ones that have the really small little area for you to write on. And guys, I'm trying to make this as fast as I can. I don't want to be too long. Um, we all get to chatting, become great friends through it all. Eventually, we brought in a little um, Mexican family, mom, dad, boy who was seven, little girl who's three, who we fell in love with those kids and spent so much time with them. And um, eventually, they fed us dinner. Dinner was um, a meat, like a chicken fajita, a um, like a pasta, and two corn tortillas. And then they sent us to our rooms telling us the government was going to cut the electricity off at 9 p.m. We need to be in our rooms and ready for that. Um, directly afterwards, after dinner, they started boarding up all the windows. So by the time we were settled in and ready for the onslaught of the hurricane, we were literally boarded in. And um, once the lights were out, it was all black. But I fell asleep and my daughter did too well before that. Luckily, um, they did bring in about six loungers for, for what was then a party of 12. Uh, I got a lounger. My daughter slept on the tile floor. It was what it was. We didn't have pillows, blankets, anything. Some of the others did because they came from the hotel and had rooms um, prior to all of this happening. Um, so we pass out somewhere after midnight. They open up the door, turn on the lights, and they're looking for space to stick more people. Somewhere through the night, we got 12 more people. Ended up being about 24 people in this 16 by 16-ish room. Um, most people sleeping on the floor, on the tile floor. I mean, it just kind of was what it was. It's what we had. And I woke up again around 5.30. You could hear the hurricane, strong winds, rain glass shattering uh, there was a piece of metal like almost like a tin that was whomping back and forth checked the radar saw it was there nothing more we could do we kind of just all hung out for a few minutes and then all slowly went back to sleep woke up at about 8 30 they opened the door and while it was still quite blustery and raining a bit it was definitely not hurricane force winds and so all of us ladies broke free and ran straight to the bathroom facilities that they had available. What we did not realize at that time is because there was no electricity, the toilets did not flush themselves. Eventually throughout the day, we actually had to take buckets of water into the bathroom with us and then flush the toilets with the buckets of water. Um, they fed us a breakfast of scrambled eggs, black beans, and two corn tortillas. Um, yes, they had coffee, thank the good Lord. It was wonderful coffee actually. Um, went back to our little concrete home and hung out, played with the kids, chit-chatted some more. Lunch came around eventually, uh, still no news about returning, nothing. We're just being taken care of the absolute best that they can. And it was really, um, they did the best that they can. And I'm very grateful for that. So next, see, let's lunch. We had, um, I'm not honestly sure what it was, but it kind of looked like a watered down sloppy joe and like a roast with veggies kind of mix. And of course, two corn tortillas with every meal. And by this point, their drink options were super limited. They were obviously running low. Um, Mid-afternoon, they brought us all back into the sanctuary and told us they were waiting for the National Guard to clear the roads, assess damage, and let them know kind of what the plan was, but they did hope to have us back to the hotel by dinner. Back to our rooms, our little concrete holes, and um, they're still boarded up. There's no wind, there's no light coming in. We still have no electricity, there's no phone service. We're literally just entertaining ourselves. Um, and eventually they start kind of gathering us all back that way. People are packing up their stuff. So my daughter and I grabbed our backpacks that we had packed in and along with our two new friends and our other newly made friends there at our hurricane shelter. And they had buses there and ready to take us back to the hotel. Uh, so we did survive. And when we got back to the hotel, we did have to wait for all the rooms to be reset because everything had been stripped from the rooms and taken to the shelters. So it was that, but we enjoyed some margaritas. We had a buffet dinner together. And finally, we're assigned a room where we took hot baths and took an early bedtime and we survived our very first and hopefully last
hurricane. But the staff was amazing. I did not feel scared at any point. They, we were just very well taken care of and I didn't hear a single person complain. The kids were well behaved. It was just, it was a, probably the best experience that we could have had given the circumstances. So thankful for that church. And I do hope to send out some money to donate to them as a thank you for sheltering us and a shout out to the Park Royal Beach Cancun for taking good care of us. Thanks for hearing my story.